linked up back with another podcast today we have charles here he is an attorney in ai in web3 we haven't touched on law on this podcast before so i thought it would be something interesting to touch on what's going on yeah i appreciate that man thanks for having me so you so you're so you was a, you were attorney way before um you got into web3 right yeah, about seven years. Seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, seven years. Geez, so and so you're we're in LA right now. Obviously, this is where the headquarters are. But you're from you, you live in New York, and you came out here for NFTLA and and everything. What was your experience with NFTLA? And to see you, man. Uh, Project, also shout out. Uh, oh yeah, we just had a, we just had a sure. wonderful event Sick with event. RTFKT yeah. and Project. It was it was a banger. It was a banger. It was sick, man. What I was your experience with it? It was so good. It was just seeing like the hundreds, seeing um all the different brands just all together. It's like you see people here in LA and you're like, wait, I know this person or I've seen this person before. And yeah, man. This, this hitters, space is yeah. so small because I'll be, you, you go to Miami because NF, the NFT Miami is uh, next week, right? Yeah, that's right. This weekend even. This this coming weekend. Up, is, yeah. It's coming up. It's so so fast. you literally see the same people. You go to Paris, you go to Miami, LA, wherever, and you just see the same exact people. But um, anyways, so let's touch on um, how you got into being an attorney and, and why you transitioned into Web3 and AI. For sure, man. Yeah. The biggest thing for me is, you know, seven years of practicing law. I did sports and entertainment law. I did litigation. I, before I was a lawyer, I sold two startup companies. And for me, that was the biggest thing because I was an entrepreneur first. I worked with emerging tech. I realized lawyers really sucked when it came to working in the space. You're trying to be creative. You're trying to work with new stuff. You're going to have a lawyer tell you no all the time. I had to work so hard to get a lawyer to tell me yes. I wanted to be one myself. And I wanted to tell other people how to do it. So for me, that was the biggest draw for Web3. AI is the new emerging field too. I'm always looking at the new emerging fields to help out artists, to help out collaborators, creators, everyone there. You need legal in the new space and, and you need a lawyer who's approachable. You need a lawyer who's knowledgeable and there just aren't so many. Yeah, uh, you know. To so, go, so, go so there's a few in the space of it because you're the only one that I know that is is touching in this space. That's an attorney. So, what what are the benefits of having an attorney while you're in Web three? Yeah, you know, people are afraid of lawyers, and that's why like I'll wear cool coats or whatever, the you know, just to like be approachable. But I realized early on that working with a lawyer from day one is one of the smartest things you could do. You may be worried and say, "Oh no, they're going to charge me a lot of money." X Y Z get a low price point because you're going to make tons of decisions in web three. Not everyone's knowing everything what's going on. They're all figuring it out. So first off I've counseled over 60 projects in web three alone, which is like, you know, Tupac, Snoop Dogg. I've done Anna Delvey, Robin hood, Barclays. Look at my website. You could see like all the people that I worked with. I see what works. I see what doesn't. So bring me on as an attorney. I'm also advising you and telling you here's how someone made a ton of money. Cause I see the money that comes in and out. Here's what might work and what might not. Also, here's what you could do legally. Also, maybe this won't work legally, but here are the risks because you just need to know what you're getting into. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like when we come into what's legal and what's not legal, how did you go about the steps in Web3? Because this, this space is changing so rapidly. How did you know what, how to go about what is, what is legal and what's not legal with the SEC? That's right, man. SEC won't let me be or FTC. I think the biggest thing for me is that I got very lucky because in like 2017, I published in Columbia Law Journal, one of the top law journals in the country, about a topic that didn't exist. I talk about UI UX. And I just had this idea that like, if you open up an app like Uber or Lyft, like they kind of look similar or Snapchat and Instagram are copying each other, like the way that the stories look. And I said, the, they're allowed to do that right now because under current American IP law, the look and feel of a website and app isn't protected under the law. So I wrote about in Columbia Law Journal. I then wrote in like a securities law journal about congressional insider trading later on. And I said, wait a second, I could talk about law that doesn't exist yet. That gave me the confidence to know that Columbia law, like, you know, top three in the country would publish my work about something that didn't exist. I felt very comfortable bringing my legal theories into a new space. A lot of people don't get published or don't have that confidence as a lawyer, you're always kind of trained and you're always told no, or you're always told this won't work, that won't work. But to know that you get the validation, I think for me was a really big step to feel like I feel good enough to give you four or five of my legal theories. And again, they're theories because yeah. we don't have a lot of case yeah. law, but you're like so much better protected. Like I worked yeah. at Omnicom, the third largest ad agency as counsel. And I learned like certain tricks that they used. I, I represented a lot of influencers and big deals, HBO, Warner, Discover Media. I did hundreds of influencer agreements and 
I saw like the different moves that you could do to protect yourself. They still work in Web3. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is like, if I give you these um, ideas about like sequential liability, for instance. What's, which, what's, what's that? I have no you, idea. You wouldn't want to get too in the weeds. But okay, give me the basis of what bro, that is. Yeah, it's a legal fiction in the US, which basically means that if, if you're like an agency and you have a client and, and you're reaching out to a vendor and, and the client doesn't pay you, you don't owe any money to the vendor as the agent. I don't know if I described that. You know, okay. Easy. Yeah. To, easy it's to kind, of, kind of confusing. We to could me. do like a, a little infographic, but basically, um, if you're representing a client, and and you have to reach out, let's say like um, you're representing, uh, I don't know, Snoop Dogg, and you go to Project, and you say like Project, like I want to rent out the space, and Project says cool. Snoop Dogg doesn't pay you. You as the agent aren't liable to Project the way that you structure it. Snoop Dogg is. Mm. And that's only in the US. And those are like just interesting legal things that you bring into Web3. And that's just one example. Bigger examples are corporate structuring. I, I have different DAO lights where I'm able to protect liability. DAO lights. A DAO light, What's yeah. What's that? I coined that. Basically, it's a three-pronged structure. I was getting beers in ETH Denver. And they call me into the VIP room and this big logistics DAO Traxa were raising $10 million. And they said, Charles, we don't know what to do because like a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. Yeah. One of our guys wants this like logistics DAO to be like completely up to the people, but we're putting 10 million bucks in it and we don't know what to do. We don't know how to protect people. We don't know how to store the IP. So I sat down with like five board of advisors and we like mapped it out with papers and beers. And I figured out that I could put two companies in the US and one overseas and be able to work integrative with a DAO so we're able to protect the different users and the different, I guess, components and directors. That's, it's a that's, little more complex. That's, but, that's yeah, hella, oh my God, that's yeah, yeah. hella complex. So, <laughs> so, so, so um, with your theories that you have, how did you know that your theories, you were as confident with your theories into Web3? Like, what made you confident to make you go about and say, okay, I have these theories and I want to put it out in the public? See, that's a really good question because the truth is it starts off as more of a theory than a fact. Like when you have ideas about things, you don't know how it'll be in practice. And just to say that I represent so many companies, I see so many co-founder disputes, I see so many hackings that you wouldn't normally think about. Yeah. But for me, it really was a little scary. I went to Camp Decrypt in Napa Valley. It's this um, Decrypt Media throws this like kind of 70 people or like, invited to the secret like society of like almost Illuminati type stuff where what yeah, Illuminati we, yeah yeah we spoke to you're in the Illuminati I, I tried to be I, I you tried to be in the Illuminati bro, I, I packed a mask and everything but they didn't, they didn't accept that <laughs> oh what? Yeah, yeah. that's I, crazy I was excited that's that's what sold me it was like working with like president of Avalanche and um Farouk and all those guys we were all in this camp together and we had people like what like oh, some lawyers were on my panel and I was scared because I have these theories that weren't even tested. Like I've, I've given it and you know, I tell the client, this will put you in the best position, but everybody agreed with my theories. There are people who worked for the SEC, I've spoken to the SEC since. And it, it's crazy because I thought they'd be like, oh man, this is bullshit, this isn't gonna work. And they asked for my number right away. I explained the way that I do things and they liked it. So the more momentum I have, I started speaking to a lot more people who worked in the space yeah. and, and I started to get validation from big firms. So for everyone listening in, what is SEC? A Securities and Exchange Commission. So what you really need to know is that the SEC hates Web3 right now as a general rule. In the, sen in the sense that uh, they see most crypto as a security, which basically means that you have to fill out a ton of paperwork and pay lawyers a lot of money in order to create your own coin. So, and know, everyone is just creating coins. Just people are everywhere, yeah. every, every day. Like there's like thousands being created every day. There are. I just did Camelot, which is a really big one on Arbitrum. I just did Savvy DeFi and a couple other coins. Um, not I, financial advice, guys. Yeah, not at all. I, I got to say, though, Camelot kind of grew from like a couple million dollars. They had like a $200 million market cap within a couple months under my advisory. It just kind of happened. Like you come up with the right structures and people are, are popping off. If you yeah. Will. Um, but the SEC, like you need a lawyer to help you navigate. If you're, if, even if you're promoting crypto, if you're like an influencer or you're a celebrity and you're saying like buy ETHMAX, like Kim Kardashian did, 
She got fined like 1.3 or 1.6. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's move yeah, forward yeah. to that because you have people like Logan Paul and right. uh, and, a, and a lot of other influencers that are getting fined right now. So what do you think? Of, what do you think about that? How is SE gonna is going? How are they breaking down and all these things? Because in 2020, this is what what was happening. It was all of these big influencers and celebrities were pro- promoting NFT projects, crypto projects. They made, you know, millions of dollars and they just dumped it. A lot of dump, a lot of them dumped it. And yeah. so, you know, how is the SEC breaking down on all of this now? Man, the list is so long. We can't even get into every name, but you could go from like T.I. to Mike Tyson to uh, Logan Paul to almost like Paul Pierce. Like so many people have been caught up in this thing. Even Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank with FTX. Tom oh, Brady. really? Tom Brady and yeah, Mr. Man. Wonderful. Yeah, there are like hundreds of millions of dollars being sued. Like you could like see all the lawsuits happening where people are promoting crypto and they're not doing it correctly. It's not hard to do. That's the funny part and, and the sad part at the same time. Because basically if you're an influencer and if you're like a celebrity endorsing a brand and you're like, I love this water, hashtag ad, hashtag pay partnership. As long as you make it clear that's an ad to your users, yeah. that's usually good. So are you FTC. trying to take that? I, so you're so you're basically saying take that idea, but with crypto and NFTs. So yeah, the SEC. When you're an influencer, you're not usually regulated by the F, SEC. But yeah. now all of a sudden, because we're talking about NFTs, which might also be a security, per like a recent um, Top Shot case, where a judge was basically saying that, oh, NFTs might also be a security as well, or it might be NFTs, it might be a crypto. So right now you really have to think about like, if you're promoting something, you just have to disclose it correctly. And part of the disclosure is saying how much money you got paid. Yeah. Not a lot of people like to do that, but like, that's the requirement. So what are the ways to protect um, yourself as an influencer or celebrity moving forward? And that can, that the SEC will not go um, with you. Like they won't, you know, find you or, or something. Man, and I was on the phone today with uh, one of the advisors because the truth is that you could get fined over a million dollars for just saying like, buy this coin. Um, also, emojis could be considered financial advice too. If you use like the emojis? graph. Emojis? Yeah, yeah. The graph with like uh, like the dollar sign, the, it was already ruled that this could be considered financial advice that you're telling people to buy. Damn. The stock's going A lot up. of people are fucked so right man, now. Holy you gotta shit. be careful. Right now, mostly celebrities are getting pinged, but like at the same time, you want to be compliant. And Do you think that the man, smaller influencers are going also going to get pinged? I think there's going to be a point where, yeah, they're going to have to know to comply. When most people comply, that they'll probably get pinged. But you could come to me like it's not very expensive, but and I could make sure that you're compliant. We're rolling out a product called DiscloseCrypto.com as well so that you could just reference the site and you don't have to worry about anything. We'll take care of it, you know, small fee like insurance where if anything happens, it's on us and, and we'll make sure that it's disclosed correctly. So if I so, was to go out and I promoted this crypto coin and I tagged uh, and put a link to your website, I will be protected and SEC won't go after me? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. And we so that's, that, so, but do I still, so would I still have to disclose how much I made? Yeah, the, the site will disclose it for you. So we'll basically just have like a fine print explaining all the disclosures, like how much you got paid, et cetera. But you'll get to know all the stuff too, like working and knowing because some people may not want to say how much you got paid, by whom, for what. But if you put it on like, you know, the fine print of a website that's legal, SEC likes it because they want to take over this kind of influencer game, if you will, instead yeah. of the FTC. So this is just another legal solution that most lawyers aren't thinking about. What's the difference between SEC and FTC? So Federal Trade Commission, um, they mostly see like communications or like FCC, like they're they're dealing with like um, communicating with other people. SEC is more about finances and and what's considered a security. If you're going to use, if you're expecting a return on something or an investment, that's typically a security. So with this new company that you're creating, you're working with SEC with it, with it. And so it's, it's like verified. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're insuring it too. Uh, we spoke to so many people at the SEC and this is what they want as well. I think that the main thing is that so many celebrities don't even know better. And they saying we're not even, sometimes they don't even buy the coin and they say, you know, buy this coin. Um, but they're getting fined like tons of money, like millions of dollars. If they only wrote like one sentence, like they wouldn't get fined a million dollars. Yeah. To me, that's crazy. It just, no one's telling them. Wow. That's, that's actually yeah. wild. It's wild. It's so, insane. Yeah. It has this launched. Is it going to be launching soon or is it active now? Yeah, it's, it's going to launch because we're keeping it in beta right now. I've been consulting a lot of different celebrities and influencers on the DL, if you will, where 
I'm making sure that they're disclosing and we have like a second site, but it, it's going to be rolling out pretty soon. So how successful do you think it will be right now because of the rap that Web3 uh, has given because of influencers and celebrities, because that's, they, they got a bad rap in 2020 and they promoted, everyone just was like, here, promote this crypto project, NFT project. And then everyone lost money, their fans lost money, family lost money, and then you had all these downfalls. So like the look on the space, when you're not in the space, like as a, just a regular person, they're like, why would I wanna be into NFT and crypto? Look what happened to this person, look what happened to this person. Yeah, man, you're, I mean, look, you're absolutely right, and it's an uphill battle in a way. But right now, especially with what's going on with the banks and everything else, I'm getting more calls right now to set up crypto advisory funds than I ever did in my life. Really? Because people, like high net worth people or individuals and companies are basically saying, why don't we put a little bit of money into Bitcoin or Ethereum instead you, of putting a new bank, you know? Yeah. And so so what, do you, what do you think of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank? You know, I think it's, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot, you know, behind the scenes over there. But primarily, it's kind of shaking people's confidence in banks, even though, like, you know, the government and the feds kind of stepped in and said, if you had a deposit in a bank, you could take it out. You still don't trust the bank like you used to. Like usually when you put money in a bank, you're like, I'm good to go. Like, yeah, I don't ever have a problem. But like now you realize like beyond 250K for FDIC insurance, yeah. you might have a problem. So some people are looking at crypto in a new way and saying, maybe it is a little scammy, but so are banks. And, and they're a little less trustworthy. Yeah. You know, the government that was the generally. that was the second so biggest nice. bank collapse ever. And it might just be the beginning. Nobody really knows. But there's a lot of money being moved. And, and just to think about now is a good time to promote different projects because not all crypto is a scam. The truth is there are some scams in Web3. There are some scams with NFTs. You know, I'm not going to lie and say there aren't. In fact, like, be careful, do your research. But there are some really good projects. There are transformative things. And that's why I still stay in the space. And, and it really help people comply. A hundred percent. So how do, you, how do you think that we get new people in the space to educate and feel comfortable to move forward? Because you're like, you know, like you said, like you, we can't even trust banks. We don't even know if we could trust banks. And uh, do you, do you think we're in a recession? You know, it's hard to say what a recession is. I think they keep moving the goalposts of what it means. I think that, yeah, nobody's realizing that we had above 7% inflation. That means even if you had a hundred K you're losing $7,000 or more exactly. of, your, of your money. Uh, you know, it's insane to think about that. Like your money is being worth, it was worth a lot less than it was a couple of years ago. And I think that people aren't realizing with the tech layoffs and everything that, yeah, there's some sort of recession. We're feeling the pinch. We're all accustomed to a certain lifestyle and we're all realizing that eggs were like a fortune recently. And Oh my God. York, yeah. Eggs were like a fortune. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So, so how do, how do people feel more secured with I all this happening? I it's, it's uh, yeah, this, you know, quote unquote recession is happening in front of everyone's face right now. And it's just one thing after another. And everyone, you know, this majority of people is like, oh, okay, let, let me just continue my life. Like, and it's not true. edu trying to educate themselves on how do I secure myself? Where do I pivot? Where is the next fiat? And the next fiat is crypto. Yeah, it's absolutely right, man. And, you know, keep doing the podcast, keep like educating, doing things like it's tiring to keep saying over and over. But the truth is, this is the reason why we're here. Like the way I see it too, and the reason I became a lawyer in the space is, I was really introduced when I was kind of bored during COVID. I went to Tulum for six months, and then I went to like some shared workspace, like a WeWork in Meatpacking District in New York. I made some friends there, and they're like, you know, I was working 15 hour days. I wanted to just be surrounded by people. I was like losing my mind. And they're like, do you want to stay for NF Tuesdays? And I got to meet people, like they were painting guys and girls, and they oh, basically- Oh, that's the, did I go there? When I went to New York, what was that place on Monday that we, oh, we that was went Crypto to? Mondays. Crypto Mondays. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that was yeah. interesting. Yeah. And, and I met people when the internet first started. We went to this penthouse after party and people who made millions of dollars on like diapers.com or pets.com or whatever it was. And, and they were chilling at this thing, like this Web3 event. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? You should all be on some island somewhere. Like you all made it big. And they're like, no, man, Web3 is bigger than the internet. Like not even the same. Like Web3 will be bigger than the internet. I said, no way. But even if it's half as big as the internet, like I'll fucking stake my reputation on that. Yeah. Part of my French, because I feel like if you were a lawyer or you were an influencer or podcaster, anybody who was there when the internet first started, you're going to have some great connections. You're going to make a real impact in the world. Like you're there, like at the cutting edge of what's happening. And I felt like being a lawyer there, if you think about if there's a lawyer when the internet first started, you'll assume they did very well. You'll assume they made a real difference and a real change in the world. And, and that's where I want to be. So I think that thinking about Web3 is kind of the same way where we're making a new internet because you have the idea of we could overthrow 
um, dictators and governments because the way I see the blockchain, it's basically an Excel spreadsheet that you can't fuck with. Yeah. That's what the blockchain is. And we have to go back to basics. And it's for the people. Yeah. It's for anybody because whatever you write on this, you don't need a government. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need anybody to say this is money or a better example. Like this is a brand, like this isn't an outburger or this is McDonald's. You could kind of prove it on the blockchain and you don't need somebody else to talk about the quality. And I think that's the main thing about Web3 because you're able to basically say whatever is digital online right now, you could put on the spreadsheet and nobody could mess with it. Nobody could get rid of it. And, and that's very powerful. And you, there's so many people like charities who are faking about how much money they have. And, and so many charities are resistant to using blockchain. Why? Because then they can't pocket the money. They can't, you know, yeah, it's kind of like, like that's what web three is. And it's kind of boring if you really think about it. It's, it was an MIT paper in 1993, um, basically just talking about what the blockchain ought to be. It's a bunch of computers. Each one holds like a C phrase or information that even if one computer goes down, another computer could still go up and still like represent what you have. And, and that's going to change the world in a lot of different ways. Do you know, do you, do you have an idea of when you think the next bull run is going to be? You know, it's tough because it's again, what is a bull run? So I read about 300 reports the end of last year, there were every single company like Deloitte or PwC or everyone was saying like about blockchain and about like finances in general or in predictions about the future. What I really learned is AI is, is the move in terms of like money and investment. Do you think AI yeah. is moving faster than Web3? Absolutely. It, it really is. Yeah. So let's get into that because AI is, you know, I found out about Chad GPT like what is it like a month ago it was like a month yeah, ago yeah. yeah it was like a month ago and i and i checked this out and everyone's like oh you could uh you could talk to this ai um a robot and you know talk to like an actual person and uh so i asked questions and then it was like learning me more and it would go more into detail of like what I needed, how do I, how to create a company. You could do ask it anything. And it was like actually talking to a real person, giving you better responses from like talking to an actual person. Yeah. And so like, what do you think? This is like scary because it will take a lot of AI will take a lot of people's jobs in the future. It is very powerful and it's, it's moving faster than web three. So how do we, um, how do we secure ourselves? Because this is scary. Yeah, in a way, it's really interesting too, because you think about AI, the government and Microsoft invested $16 billion in AI development. Meanwhile, the government is basically saying most of Web3 crypto is a security. So it's almost like the government, because you could technically overtake a government with Web3. You could technically record things on a blockchain that you may not need a government to tell you stuff. And that's scary. So as a government, um, releasing their own money, like El Salvador and, you know, in Latin American countries, we see that people are desperate for money. They don't trust their government, like hyperinflation in Turkey. People would rather trust the Bitcoin than that. So governments are a lot more resistant to Web3, but AI, a lot of them are very happy about because it's, it's advancing their technology. It's advancing their countries. So, and, and a lot of companies love it too, because Amazon laid off like a record amount of employees recently. All these big tech companies because of are AI? Too, yeah, most likely also because like you look at Elon Musk monetizing Twitter and you see everything that's happening. A lot of these jobs aren't needed anymore. The truth is a lot of coders had a lot of cushy jobs and, you know, no disrespect to coders. I think they're great. and I'm happy they're there. I think that we're reaching a point where AI is coding a lot of websites. There are tools right now that you could copy other people's code and websites. A lot of it's open source. Yeah, which you don't need, you know. Yeah, which is wild because you know ChatGPT is not the only AI company that's that's taking over the industry. There is yeah. there is there is hundreds and hundreds of a, like uh, AI companies where I, my friend um, took this podcast, Ajusha. She took this podcast and she put it into an AI software, and it literally cut a 30 second video from this podcast and for Instagram. Wow. And that just took a whole editor's job out of the, out of the, the park. Like that is wild. Yeah, man. It's insane. And I even used it for law. I had a client, you know, with Y Combinator and he had a couple questions and I literally plugged it into chat GPT to see what it would say. And it did disclaim, you got to talk to a lawyer, but it gave me, it gave me seven kind of causes of action for this case. Three of them were right, you know, and, and as a lawyer, I'm like, damn, that was pretty good though. Anyway, because I could see the three that they said and, and I could use those. 
and I have other people using ChatGPT for a lot of other things. And I think it's just going to keep getting better. And this is just one thing. We have the AI generated art, if you remember, all those profile pictures that everyone used. Yep. So I think that that was going to parlay for like general society to basically say, all right, man, I know computers could kind of take over our jobs and everything else, but this is kind of cool. I'll pay like 20 bucks or whatever it was in order to get like the genera generative art. Uh, public opinion is on the side of AI and not really as much on Web3, uh, you know, which is super interesting. Yeah. So when it comes to uh, s the other side of AI, the dangerous parts of people using it for bad, that's where it gets scary. ChatGPT, you can't ask certain questions. You can't ask personal information. Uh, it, it won't give you it. So what if there's another side to it and it you can ask it, questions to plot to rob banks to do do like crazy things in the world where it's dangerous for people no it's super interesting it's like kind of like a dark web of ai i think the main thing is there were a lot of court cases about this because let's say i think there was a tv show called like how to commit a murder and get away with it or something like that yeah and there was a lawsuit about it and you know you just have to kind of disclaim and say this is fictitious etc so the right disclaimers are, are definitely they need to be in, in place also, like just thinking about generally, like if you're just, you know, a normal person kind of getting exposed to the space, Web3, AI, et cetera, disclaimers are so important. Terms are so important. This is why you need a lawyer. You know, for a couple hundred dollars, I could write terms and conditions for a website and that could save you because there is a company, Celsius and a few other companies, Voyager, the, the bankruptcy court ruled that billions of dollars were actually owned by the company just by these terms like you know when you go on a website wow. it's just terms and conditions yeah billions of dollars like are exchanging hands just for what you write on these terms and this is a huge deal that not everyone talks about just yet like we have so much power now with ai like what it disclaims and what it says you really have to think about it and that's why i think having a lawyer i call myself a legal navigator or a guide i think that we need new terminology for for lawyers in the space not associate or senior associate something new fresh like we have community managers like where all these community managers come yeah. from that. Like a couple of years ago, the job didn't exist. Now all of a sudden everybody has like four years community uh, experience. So I think that this is more of like a guiding advisory role as a lawyer that you kind of need from day one. And you don't need the lawyer every day, but you're going to make tons of decisions, whatever you do. And sometimes you're going to want to check with the lawyer as well. So, so you're in the right spot. Exactly. Did you, have you had anyone that um, you try to give them advice and they didn't listen and they, they got screwed in the end? I have actually, and uh, you know, attorney client privilege, but I gotta say that there are some really big projects out there that I've counseled and some didn't listen to my advice. Some even came back after they didn't listen to my advice and said, Charles, fix this. Um, I can say an example though, which was really interesting. Um, during the bull run back in the day, uh, three 23 year old kids basically came up with this like NFT project that they made 800 K off of in like a week and a half. Wow. Yeah, they hired someone off Damn. of Fiverr. They just like made like a, typical website and they just like you know made some like kind of they weren't monkeys but they were kind of similar and they made all this money and they promised everybody who bought it like a ton of stuff like you're gonna get to ride a cyber truck like one in ten or, or all these things um, but the main thing was that you were gonna get some sort of educational experience and they're gonna create this whole coursework around your nfts they got the money they were young kids they're like you know forget it like we're good and they, it's called a rug pull and this is when rug pulls first came out so I told them, guys, like, you really, you really got to honor, like, what you told them or, or let's figure it out. They said, no, Charles, we're good. Then all of a sudden the rug pull cases come out and they, they call me up frantically, like, what do we do? Are we going to get in trouble? I said, don't worry, like, let's figure this out. Like, what did you promise your users and let's deal with it. I found a Silicon Valley startup that basically needed a bunch of beta testers to create their new educational platform. So I said, I have thousands of people holding these NFTs. Why don't you allow them to kind of join and get this creative coursework? Why don't we create like a virtual um, experience of a cyber truck and at least like, like order one. So we did all that stuff and then everybody was happy at the end of the day because the company got testers, the holders got the experience with their NFTs. So it's more wow. of kind of thinking outside the box yeah. and most lawyers aren't going to tell you that stuff. But I think that's the most important thing, man, because I want to see the space succeed. And um, yeah, I want I just want to be there at the cutting edge because if you do the wrong thing legally, you may be completely screwed, honestly. I think you really have to think about it, but also you don't want to think about it. I want to take the legal out of the equation for you to do what you do. Amazing. I'm moving forward. What is the, what is the next three goals that you have um, in the next coming months? 
That's a big one. I mean, I'm speaking at NFT NYC as an expert on NFT lawyers uh, coming up pretty soon. So excited about that one. Uh, it's the third time speaking at NFT NYC. My bigger goal too is I haven't really written much in the space yet. I'm a really good writer. I've litigated for years. I've won, I think, every single court case I've argued in court. It's a very good writer, but I was very hesitant to write about Web3. The main reason is because kind of what you said, where sometimes you give advice and people don't always take it or they'll kind of take it and, and not completely or not understand it. I also don't want to give away the secret sauce for everything I do, but I realize, especially speaking with people in the space, that people need this. And I'm starting to write a bi-weekly newsletter that basically talks about all my understandings and musings of Web3 and AI so people could just like understand it a lot better. So that's a big goal as well. And lastly, it's a pretty ambitious goal, but I'm looking to make a shared workspace before the end of the year. More of a collaborative environment than like a WeWork, because my idea is that um, if you put smart people together, good things are going to happen. I, I love the 100%. idea. Yeah, man. I love the idea. Even just hanging out with other people, you're going to come up with an ideas and talk about it instead of just like looking up on the internet. So ideas are the new capital and that's the truth. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember us in New York and we're just, True. we're just, <laughs> we're just sitting and we're all just talking and, and just like everyone is in the space. Everyone's building everyone is educated and, and, you know, passionate about, you know, creating something dope and we're just throwing ideas at each other and then helping each other. Yeah. Hey, let's go to this event. Hey, I want you to meet this person. And that's what it's all about. Bringing everyone together and absolutely trying to grow and not just take everything for yourself, but also bring everyone else with you. That's right, man. We've entered the collaborative revolution. So it used to be back in the day, the Vanderbilts, the, Rockefellers, it used to be great in capitalism to burn down the competition, burn down the railroads, and those are the richest people right now. But now we have the collaborator, we have the person who works with others. In my view, that's the person who's gonna succeed in the next 20 years. The one who's able to connect and work with other people, because we all are building here, and we all need each other to make it happen. 100%, well, she's, yeah, if you have anything else to it. say to everyone, um, go for it. Yeah, I got to say, man. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. And Slam Legal, S-L-A-M-L-E-G-L. Go check them out, y'all. Go check, check me out. out. Um, check out my projects and check out the idea of crypto influencers or touching AI or Web3. I think we should talk. If I can't help you, I'll tell you who can because the truth is you probably need a lawyer. Um, if you're thinking about it, you probably already needed one. But lawyers aren't always scary, man. Like, I'm not that scared of a dude. And I think that the real idea here is that if we work together, like, real good things are going to happen. Amazing. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, man. Mango out. Peace.